Typical day spinal cord injury rehab consists of things like you and I would do uh, in our normal uh, activities. We get the patient up in the morning, we groom them, we get them dressed, uh, we get them ready for the day, uh, and that would usually uh, begin with our occupational therapist uh, providing that activity of daily living, just like you and I. And then we would uh, usually progress the patient from out of their room down to the therapy gym where they work with uh, the physical therapist, which are things like uh, sitting balance, standing if they're able to do that, exercises, range of motion exercises, how do they transfer um, and how do they manipulate the, their wheelchair um, or their gait uh, if, if they are walking. Other, there's a whole host of other therapists that play into the patient's uh, daily routine. We individualize everybody's therapy so it benefits uh, that person. So some may have someone that works on their swallow, on their memory. Some may have more that are working with their diet and, and their intake. Helping patients adjust to their injury is uh, is one of the challenges uh, with all of the rehab team. We have um, several disciplines uh, that that is their area of expertise. Uh, we have uh, staff and neuropsychologists that work with our spinal cord injury patients. Helping a patient adjust um, to their injury um, is best managed when you have a complete team uh, of spinal cord injured professionals that are dedicated to the treatment of the spinal cord injured patient. We have something that we call a, our peer mentor support group. Uh, this consists of patients who have had injuries in the past that are um, invited to come back uh, and meet with the family, meet with the patient, answer the patient's questions. So not only do we find the peer mentor support group very important for our patients, the other organized group that we have here after they're discharged from the rehab facility is our support challenge and inspire group uh, that meets monthly. And I think it's very important after you leave the secured surroundings of your rehab facility that you, you continue to stay connected with the spinal cord injured population because really they understand what you're going through. Ourselves as healthcare providers, we just treat people with spinal cord injury, but I think the important thing is, is with the peer group and the ongoing uh, support group is that you're around uh, people who actually understand truly what you're going through. Usual length of stay for our uh, patient population um, varies individually. But for the most part, if they're paraplegic, meaning they have lost the use of their legs, they're about roughly a, a four to six week stay, depending on if they have any other injuries that have, that have coincided with their spinal cord injury. Our higher level of injuries are tetraplegics, meaning they have difficulty using their arms and their legs. These patients tend to stay a little bit longer, and sometimes you'll see them in the eight to 10 um, but this varies patient to patient and week to week with each uh, patient's progress. So some may stay longer and some may stay shorter. It just depends on what goals we've set for the patient and what we think is realistic for their expected outcome when they leave. Education we think is very important. Uh, most of the time Unfortunately, the patient is just still trying to accept his or her injury and education um, is not something that they're, they're quite ready for. Uh, at any rate, we try to provide them with educational materials that are both written uh, in book form. We try to provide them handouts that are um, uh, written on pieces of paper that they can keep in their notebook and take home with them. And we have different classes scheduled throughout the rehab stay that are focused on various topics that we as a rehab team feel is important to the spinal cord injured population. When you hear the term complete and incomplete injury, these are terms that uh, spinal cord injury professionals will use after we have admitted a patient to our rehabilitation facilities and we perform an exam. Uh, you may hear it referred to as the Asia Impairment Scale. That will tell us um, 
a lot of things, but to, to tell someone they're a complete injury, this refers to the fact that they can't feel or move areas below uh, that last level of injury. When you say someone is incomplete, they have a little bit more below that level of injury, so they may have some sensation and some motor movement, which means they have the ability to move an extremity um, uh, that's below that, that level of injury that they've sustained. So people often ask, what other services are there? What happens to me when I leave rehab? Um, our answer uh, to that question is um, spinal cord injury, unfortunately, is a lifelong uh, diagnosis. So we uh, follow our patients in the outpatient clinic, uh, in the spinal cord injury clinic, for as long uh, as needed. And most people, this is for their lifetime. And we follow up on things that are related to spinal cord injury, the sequela, or the things that happen after you have a spinal cord injury that don't necessarily present themselves in the acute care setting. But as you age with spinal cord injury, there are different diagnoses and different uh, treatments and different things things that arise that we need to address as, as spinal cord injury physicians and a spinal cord injury team um, throughout your continuum uh, of care. There's a lot of information and resources that are available uh, for the spinal cord injury patient. Uh, I would encourage you to seek this information through your health care providers and your, and your spinal cord injury team in regards to what is available to you as resources uh, regarding spinal cord and spinal cord injury research.